Welcome to Navigating the Customer Experience. Want to improve your organization's customer service? Looking for insider tips to knock your customer socks off? Then you're in the right place. Here's your host, Yannick Grant. Welcome to Navigating the Customer Experience. On today's episode, we have a very special guest, and his name is David Durham. David is a mindset and self-mastery business coach, speaker, author, and trainer. Before coaching, David had the opportunity to build a six-figure business his first year in real estate at the very young age of 20. He is also the author of his first book, You Must, World-Class Principles for Success, which he is so excited to launch in March. David now helps other self-employed entrepreneurs between the ages of 30 and 50 who have been in business for less than five years to build a thriving business by helping them step out of self-sabotage and step into their success. So without further delay, welcome David. Hi, Unique. How are you? I'm so excited to be on the show today. Thank you for having me. Great. All right. So mindset is so important and mastering your thoughts, um, being able to control your feelings. Um, clearly, it impacts on your behavior and your attitude. So could you share a little bit about maybe what was the catalyst that propelled you into this particular area? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. It's Emotional intelligence in a business is huge, especially for entrepreneurs, self-employed entrepreneurs that have been in business for less than five years. One day, you're on top of the world, you're ready to conquer everything, and then like three days later, you're questioning all the moves you've made in the past six months, and is this the right choice? Mm -hmm. And it's going through the ups and downs that are extremely hard, and emotional intelligence, which essentially boils down to your mindset and how self-mastered you are, is how resilient can you be? When you're facing adversity, people are doubting you and telling you you can't do it, which I have so many stories around that. And just struggling, how are you to persevere through that? Because I believe everyone typically knows what they need to do to get the business where they want to go, yet many times they're just in their own head and they're in their own way. And if they could get out of their own way and out of their head, then they can have the success. And so when it comes to mindset and self-mastery, it's about being resilient and being able to face anything with a positive perspective that's empowering rather than a perspective in their business that's disempowering and is actually holding them back. Mm -hmm. Now, what are some of maybe the top three suggestions or tools that you provide to your business owners or entrepreneurs to ensure that they maintain that level of self-mastery and emotional intelligence so they can lead a team that is also positive minded. So of course, you know, they can have a a positive internal customer service culture. And of course that will hopefully spill over to the experiences that the customers have that visit their business, whether it be online or face to face. That is an amazing question because it directly leads to, it's like being a leader and how you lead by example, you know, for that everyone that works for you, which then directly correlates to customer service. And one of the first things I teach, I'm a certified coach, almost uh, finishing the certification. And what we teach is it's seven levels of perspective. And when you understand these levels of perspective, then you can actually decide how you want to show up each moment every day. Mm -hmm. You can understand which perspective helps you and how. Right, Some of them help you in this situation and other perspectives on those seven levels help you in something else. And so one of the tools that I teach, which is going to be hard to get in just on this call, but it's the seven levels of perspective. So no matter what happens to you, you can adopt a perspective that's actually going to empower you and help you move forward. Mm. So what that looks like as a leader is when you're implementing the seven levels of perspective naturally everyone following you, everyone that's looking up to you and you're leading by example sees that and they respect that and then they can grow from that themselves. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. It does make sense. So so you form a perspective. That's that's tip number one or suggestion yep. number one. And, yep. and do you have any more, like two more you could share with us? Absolutely. So when it comes to mindset and self-mastery, right? So when it comes to the way you think, like I said, number one is perspective. That's what's going to keep you going. And two, it's how do you overcome fear? Like that's huge, just fear in general, fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear fear of the unknown. And so how do you overcome that? And that's a huge, that's a huge step get, getting in your business, right? So self-employed entrepreneurs that have been in business for less than five years, many times fear rejection, they fear failure. And here's where it boils down to. The reason why these fears are there is because they're attaching their identities to results. 
Mm. And so whether they do great, then that means they're great. And if they don't, that means they don't. So when they fail, they take it to mean that they're a failure. Make sense? And so when you feel like a failure, well, then naturally the thoughts going through your head is I am not good enough. And when I am not good enough shows up for you, then you're naturally going to feel disempowered. You're going to feel bad about yourself. And when you have the thoughts of I'm not good enough, you don't feel good enough, then who in the right mind is going to want to take action? Mm. Then they let fear overrun them. They let fear overrun their business. And now they wonder why it's so hard to take massive action. They wonder why they are procrastinating so much, but it's because of that. So when you can start shifting that perspective, it all ties together, right? Because you shift the perspective, then you start having different thoughts, thoughts that are empowering with those thoughts that you have, you have different emotions. So now that you have a different perspective, different thoughts, different emotions, naturally you're going to take different action because thoughts and emotions equal action. True. Very true. That's a really encompassing of like coaching because many times they're like my clients would come to me and it's with these, with these stories but all they really need to do is shift the way they're thinking, ask themselves better questions, and quit identifying with their results mm-hmm. as to who they are. Knowing, like, Being able to stand in their own skin and say, I am enough as I am, no matter what happens in my organization, no matter what happens, my identity isn't attached to this outcome. My identity isn't attached to the failures, and it's also not attached to the wins. It just is, and I'm enough as I am which really allows one to adopt the right perspective, an empowering perspective to move forward. Amazing. So we have a lot of small um, to medium sized business owners that listen to this show um, across the world in different countries. And many of them have to do their own sales. You know, they have to pick up the phone, they have to make cold calls. And as you said, when they get rejected, sometimes they do attach it to their identity. How do you get rid of that fear? before you actually take the telephone up and call someone to tell them about a product or service that you have to offer to them. And of course, to pitch it in a way that it sound, it, you know, it comes over as being authentic in terms of your product or service adding value to their life and you know, providing them with useful benefits, but yep. also in a way that you are able to utilize the skills that you are best suited for to, you know, to marry what you're offering with what their business, you know, has to offer to their customers. Yes. Yes. Everyone listening right now, um, I know wants to be able to make those sales calls and prospect and come from a place that's genuine and not feel salesy, right? Like they can make the calls and know that I'm only here to help. I don't want to feel salesy. A lot of people don't want to make those calls because they have that fear of rejection and the fear of what are they going to think about me. Mm-hmm. Right? If I call people that know me, well, what are they going to think? They're going to think I'm selling them. How do you overcome that? First thing first, you've got to be 100% confident in what you do, your product or your service. Reason being, if you are 100%, for example, as a coach, I know I can help transform businesses. I know I can help them get out of their way, double, triple their income. I've created the results multiple times. So when you are 100% confident in that, then when you reach out in prospect to these people you know, people you don't, whatever it might be, you come from a place of contribution. You come from a place of this is what it can do for you. I want to help you because I'm so confident in what I have and I'm so confident that it would help you. It would actually be more unethical for me to not reach out. When you can get to a point like that in your business – where you can genuinely come from contribution, things will start changing. Because now you're making the calls. When you're on the call, another huge obstacle business owners have is overcoming objections. You know, when they say, I want to think about it, so many business owners say, great, when would you like me to call you back? (laughs) Right? Rather than digging in, well, what is it you want to think about? It's financials. Great, tell me more about the financials. Is there anything else other than the financials? X, Y, and Z, digging into it. Because if you are come from a place of contribution and you do truly believe in your product and service, then you should have no problem overcoming any objection and realizing that an objection is just a request for more information. Sure. And so when you're overcoming that, you're actually coming from a place of, I just want to help you understand more of how this product or service can best suit you. And from a customer service standpoint, they go hand in hand because you're doing what's best for them. Mm-hmm. Now, on the flip side, how do you overcome the fear of making the calls, mm-hmm. right? That's another story, right? Like how yeah. do we overcome the 
here and actually do it. And the first thing first is realize you're attaching your identities to your outcomes. Realize, wow, okay, now I see that when I get hung up on told no hundreds of times, I'm attaching that to me. No one wants to talk to me. When you can just start disti- like making that distinction, then you can start changing it. Here's a fun story. When I hopped into real estate my first year, I was 19 years old in the business, right? I got told by everybody that there's thousands of other agents. What makes you any different? You're not old enough. You know, who's going to trust you with the sale of their house and so much more. And so I would literally call over 700 people every single day. I would talk to over 100 people every single day. I'd get told no. I'd get told you're a low life, you're a bottom feeder, go get a real job. I'd get cussed at, I'd get hung up on every single day. And then I'd go on the appointments that I did create for the first few months and I lost the client. So I'm feeling terrible about myself. All I'm getting is rejected. All I'm getting is that I'm told no. Oh my gosh, like what in the world, right? Like, <laughs> And so how I kept pursuing that to overcome the fear of calling and the fear of reaching out is realizing one, they're getting hung up on, what are three perspectives that I could adopt that mean nothing about me? One, they could have just gotten a car crash. Two, their dog just died. Three, they're going through a divorce. Four, I interrupted them during dinner. Five, they are sick. Great, I just created five reasons of why they hung up on me, didn't answer, whatever, that meant nothing to do with me. Mm. So if you can do that in business, Rather than saying they didn't answer, so they clearly don't want to talk. They didn't call me back, so they clearly don't want to talk. They hung up on me. They clearly are not interested. I've called them four times. They haven't responded. Rather than taking it to mean they don't want to talk to me, they don't want my product, they don't want my service, maybe I'm not good enough, thinking, wow, well, they could be really busy in their business. They could be going through some really tough times and haven't had a chance to come around. You can, you have a choice to adopt other perspectives. True. Very true. That's a very good perspective to look at. So it's kind of like you're projecting that clearly just as how your life has challenges and obstacles and hurdles that you have to overcome every day. They're human too. And they probably have their own obstacles, hurdles and challenges. And maybe their obstacles and hurdles are way surpassing what you are actually going through. So that's why you weren't able to get in touch. So then you don't take it personally and absorb all of the negative energy that you're getting from, you know, the nose. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And in realizing that you're making assumptions and you're making interpretations, you're assuming that it's about you and you're interpreting them not calling to mean something about you. True. That assumption interpretation has just as much validity as saying they got in a car accident has nothing to do with me and it has just as much validity of saying I might have caught them in between work or when they were at dinner you don't know the real answer so which perspective are you willing to adopt that's actually going to help you move forward in a positive light mm-hmm. and to add to that real quick I called one of these prospects I called her over 26 times in less than three months Okay, that's a lot of phone calls. Mm -hmm. And she never called me back. She never texted me back. She never got back to me via email. And one day, she called me, hey, David, I need you to come list my property. I'm so sorry I haven't gotten back to you. Things have been crazy on my end. I've been going through so much, but I appreciate your follow-up. And that goes to show we can't assume and interpret it to mean things about us. Mm Mm-hmm. That's amazing. So here's here's how, how I want to put an, a nice spin on it now, David. Yeah. In all the years that I've been doing customer service training and workshops with customers, one of the challenges that I or or one of the comments that I've gotten from participants in workshops is when the customers come at them so angrily, you know, they're disrespectful. As you know, you mentioned a lot of it. You know, they told you you're a bottom feeder. Um, you were worthless. You should go find a different job. So, you know, in a, in a customer facing environment, you know, the customers are going to tell you a lot of things if their product or service isn't working. And if you're not responding to, to them in a way that they expect you to respond, they're, they're going to actually start attacking you. And a lot of the employees take the attack as a personal attack. My approach with them is, 
don't take it personally because a lot of times these customers don't know you personally and they're really hurting because of the issue they're having. Maybe they had some, before they came to your business place, they had a argument with their, their kid or, or with their boss, or maybe, you know, someone bad drove them on the road. So, you know, they're frustrated. They're, you know, they're angry. So they come into your business place already with a negative mindset. Why is it that as human beings, when something starts to, you know, people start to say things to us that we're, we don't want to hear, we assume the negative and not the positive. Yeah, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a scientist <laughs> to, <laughs> to say, well, this is why, according to X, Y, and Z. Yes. Here's what I'll say. Negativity is, there's studies to show how strong, it, it's easier to be negative than it is positive. We are human beings. We jump to the worst case scenario. Many times we make make it to believe something about us. We take it personally. Everyone listening that is facing that struggle, it's not your fault. It's human. It, it, it's being human. It's not your fault. And now it's your responsibility to choose to not take it personally. It's your responsibility to realize, wow, the assumption is that I'm making is that it's about me when in reality – well, why could they be acting this way? Maybe they got cut off when they were driving to work and then the coffee spilt on them when they got out of their car. They stubbed their toe on the curb. They rolled into the office. Five minutes late, got yelled at, then called you. Like True. maybe that happened. True. So it comes back to what interpretation, what assumption, what story or perspective are you going to decide to roll with? But realize it's totally human nature to get upset, to take it personally. And now it's your responsibility to change that. All right. So apart from cha- taking a different perspective, are there external uh, stimuli that you could probably expose yourself to that will help you to kind of change your mindset or at least maintain somewhat of a positive mindset throughout the course of your day? Absolutely. Take note of the conversations that you're participating in. Mm-hmm. Right? So when it, it's, it's the people that you're around. So even if you're at work, if if you're a business owner, typically you can kind of choose who you're around. And if you're an employee, maybe you don't. But you can choose the conversations that you engage with, right? There's that quote that I, I find very interesting is that small-minded people, people talk about other people, you know, average minds talk about events and brilliant minds, right, talk about ideas. And it just comes down to like, what kind of conversations are you having? Because most people are talking about other people and they're talking about events and they're complaining and they're being negative. Mm-hmm. If you're around those conversations, then you can't adopt that different perspective. I should say, you can, it's going to be really difficult to. Yet, if you just start controlling who you put yourself around and what conversations you're engaging in, then things could really shift for you. The conversations that you could start having could really change your life. Mm-hmm. They could become much more empowering. You're going to start putting yourself around more positive people. So every time you're engaged in a conversation, ask yourself, you know, is this a conversation worth having? Like, is this moving me forward in any kind of way? Or is this gossip? Is this negativity? Is this complaining? And I think that little awareness that you have can, can significantly make a difference. Amazing, amazing. So matters not where you are in the organization, whether you're the employee or you're the boss, think about who you're speaking to and what kind of conversations you're having. There's a quote that says, you know, you are a combination of the five people that you spend the most time with. Do you agree with that quote? 120%. (laughs) Yes. Elevating your peer group is huge. It's consistently you have to edit it. If you want to take your business to the next level, look who you're around. You're the average of the five people you're around the most. So. Amazing, amazing. So if you're going to move forward, you clearly need to look at who your circle of influence is and try to position yourself where, you know, people who can actually help you move forward, you know, mentally, spiritually and emotionally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, could you share with us um, maybe one or two books that you've read recently or maybe in the past that has really helped to grow and develop you as an individual and make you a better person? Absolutely. So it, there's so many different types of books and so many different kinds of genres. So I've actually got three that I'm going to share that I think made a really significant impact for me. Mm-hmm. One of them is The Compound Effect by Darren ah, Hart. Amazing, yes. Yes. Oh, love, love, love that book. Um, it's huge. It's played a big role in my life. And you know, I kind of know it like the back of my head and it's implemented now in my life and in my business. Mm-hmm. 
the second book is something that's really going to help someone show up emotionally in a great way every single day. This correlates to customer service because it's a sense of controlling how you feel and how you think. So when someone's yelling at you, right, how are you going to give them the best customer positive, the best customer experience? So this book's Awaken the Giant Within, and that's Tony Robbins. Huge book. It is a long book, but I'm telling you, it is a powerful, powerful, powerful book. It's something you definitely want to read. And then the third book, it's the 10X Rule. It's by Grant Cardone. And I stand by that book because things really do take 10 times the amount of work that we expect. You want to raise your level of customer service to a high level. You know, it's going to take more work than you think. You might need to 10x that action plan that you have. Mm -hmm. You want to build that business so you can have more business and still give them the same experience. You're typically going to have to 10x your efforts. And so he goes into depth about that in that book. So The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy, Awaken the Giant Within by Tony Robbins, and The 10x Rule by Grant Cardone. Love it. Love it. Amazing. So we'll have the links to those books in our show notes for this episode, guys that are listening. All right. So share with us now, David, what's a one online resource tool, website or app that you absolutely cannot live without in your business? Yeah. The beauty is my business I keep is very, very simplistic. <laughs> so I don't use all these crazy apps, all these crazy tools. I don't, I don't, I don't use that. So to answer your question, there isn't one. What I would say that helps me deliver the highest level of customer service to be able to engage with my my um, you know my clients and just the people, my tribe and things like that to give them a great experience would be the customer relationship management system that I use, which is Entreport. Mm-hmm. Entreport's one of my favorite ones just for marketing, being able to engage with them. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite. But as far as like a tool, website, app, I keep my you know Google Docs. <laughs> everything <laughs> yeah. everything centralized in one place mm-hmm. nice okay now what's the one thing that's going on in your life right now that you're really excited about either something that you're working on to develop yourself or your people yeah i'm pumped i'm thrilled you guys i have you my book my first book you must world-class principles for success it launches this month which is in march when we recorded and I'm just thrilled to get this out to the world. Got my final round of editing complete, getting my author copy, and it's going to be released to the world in just a couple of short weeks. Awesome. All right. So the book should be out by the end of March, and I'm assuming it's going to be available on Amazon, correct? Yes, it will be. Absolutely. All right. All right. All right. So we're going to share David's um, links to his different social media connections, and we'll also share you know, all of his information. So if you guys want to reach out and see what he has written about in his awesome book that's coming out this month, you can hop on over to the show notes of this episode and connect there and see the link to the book. Um, now, can you tell our listeners where they can find you online in order to get access to this amazing thing that you're releasing? Absolutely. I've actually got two things for you, so I'm excited about this. Um, one is my website, davidwdurham.com. So that's www.davidwdurham.com. And you can find everything about me. Um, when my book comes out, it'll be on there. You know, So you can find the links there. You can find my Facebook, my Instagram, all that good stuff. And for those of you guys that want access to other millionaires, influencers, thought leaders to help you break through in your business, I just got done with an online conference. It went amazing. We had 30 experts, and I got five of the best interviews that really helped transform other businesses. And I'm going to give you those five interviews for free, free access to them. So if you go to www.therocketentrepreneur.com, so that's therocketentrepreneur.com, put your name in your email, and you'll get access to five different about 20 to 30 minute long interviews with millionaires, thought leaders, influencers to help you break through a plateau in your business, to help you break through and build a bigger business. Wow. Amazing. So we are so thankful for David's freebie that he's sharing with us. So, so amazing. Now, David, before we wrap the interview up, we always like to ask our guests, what is one quote or saying that during times of adversity or challenges, they revert to this quote or saying, do you have one of those? Yeah, I have so many of those. (laughs) I have so many of those. And I can give you a couple. One of them is, I am enough as I am. 
right? In all transparency, I think no matter what level of business you get to, I talk to millionaires that sometimes they wake up and they feel like they're not good enough. And so no matter what happens in life, no matter what happens in your business, you are enough as you are. And then the second one is, you know, I always look how far I've come and never how far I have to go. Being an entrepreneur, we're all so hungry. We are business owners. We have these huge visions. And as we grow, the vision just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And sometimes we forget how far we've come and we only look at how far we have to go. Mm. So one of those reminders is, right, I always look how far I've come and never how far I have to go. Nice. It's like you're reviewing all of your accomplishments so you can be proud of yourself and give yourself a pat on the back and some level of recognition versus I have so far to go and you're beating yourself up for not maybe meeting a deadline or doing something within a specific period of time, but rather focusing on the things that you have done well and that you have accomplished so that it can propel you to move forward, right? Yes, that is your your nail on the head, right? All right. All right, David. Well, thank you so much for taking time to share such great insight as it relates to mindset, um, thoughts, the things that help you to move forward so that at the end of the day, you can be a better individual, a better entrepreneur. And of course, um, if you're a better entrepreneur, then you'll have a better team. And hopefully that will translate into a better customer experience. I had such an honor being on the show. I want to say thank you so much for the opportunity to come on to to your platform and and share this message. What you're doing is just, it's amazing. So thank you so much. You're most welcome. Thank you. So guys, those of you that are listening, you can always head over to our Facebook group, Navigating the Customer Experience Community. So there we share more information as it relates to customer experience. And of course, we get to connect as a group. And you can always follow us on Twitter at Navigating CX. So until next time, I'm your host, Yannick Grant. We really appreciate your support of this podcast. Are you ready to grow your business even more or improve your leadership skills or train your team members in the art of customer service? Give us a call at 305-848-0815 or visit our website at www.yaniquegrant.com. That's Y-A-N-I-Q-U-E-G-R-A-N-T dot com. Remember, 305-848-0815 or visit our website at yaniquegrant.com. Our new online course, Mastering Customer Experience and Increasing Your Revenue is now available. The link for this will be on the show notes of each episode starting September 7, 2016. The first two modules are free. So hop on over, have a look, and take the steps to increase your revenue. Thanks for listening. For more awesome resources to take your customer service game to another level, head over to navigatingthecustomerexperience.com. See you next time.